Oh, we have to wait for her. Just add an extra zero now, Richard. empowering us to be the people of God that you've called us to be. May you bless each person that is here today, O oh God, and may we just lift our hearts and put aside any distractions or burdens we've carried into this space 
so that we can be fully open to receive all it is that you desire to give to us. And we say this in your many names, amen and amen. And good morning. What a joy it is to welcome everybody to Metropolitan Community Church of Albuquerque on this glorious Sunday morning. It's great to see everybody, and the weather's changed, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's gotten a little bit cooler out there with the wind and everything, but it's good to see everybody today. Please sign in on the attendance registers located in the seat pockets in front of you. And if this is your first time with us, please complete a welcome card, if you would, and uh, just bring that to me following worship. We're in the process of getting some gift bags made up, so please, if you come next week, I'll give you a gift bag, I promise. Okay. Um, shout out to those that are watching us live stream. Uh, it's good to have you with us, and uh, you're also an important part of this worship today. Uh, today, we're going to hear a story from the Gospel of Mark about James and John who went to Jesus and asked if they could be have a seat of honor and be great um, in his realm. And uh, Jesus said, can you drink from the same cup as me? Can you uh, receive the baptism that I must receive? So we're going to hear what it means to be a servant of Jesus as followers of Jesus. So we're going to hear that reading now. A reading from the chapter 10 of the Gospel of Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the servant of all. For the Son of Humanity came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Would you join your heart with mine as we go to God in prayer? Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given to each of us. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of hope. And it is in that hope that we come before you today, bringing the needs of our loved ones, bringing our own needs, and bringing the needs and the concerns of our countries and worlds. We pray for those that are in need of healing, those that are awaiting a diagnosis or have received one or know somebody that is waiting. May your healing hand extend to them, bringing that touch, bringing that relief, bringing that help where it is needed most. We lift up to you our world, war-torn areas, wars and rumors of wars, and we pray that we might become peacemakers, that peace might begin with us somehow, some way, and flow into our world. And we pray for our country and an upcoming decision that must be made 
May you guide us, speak in us and to us, and help us. And now hear the silent concerns in our hearts, for we know that you hear us on the inside. And we lift these needs and these praises up to you now. And these things we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Ted was going to help accompany us on the piano on a couple of songs this morning, but he happens to be sick, and we're just going to do the best we can a cappella. So if there's a pianist out there. <laughs> so join us on Singing Majesty. Majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own his anthem raise so exalt lift up on high the name of jesus magnify come glorify christ jesus the king majesty Worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Once again, majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory honor and praise majesty kingdom authority flow from his throne unto his own his anthem raise so exalt lift up on high the name of Jesus, magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified. King of all kings. Amen. If you all know of any piano players, would you refer them to me, please? We're also looking at a track uh, system that we can speed up the tracks or slow down the tracks that are more flexible. Um, so as soon as I finish my research, we'll make a decision on that. And hopefully get tracks in here with a multitude of songs. So just be patient, please. I know music is a very important part of worship. So we have list of who's the greatest in a certain fields, especially in the sports field. So let me ask you this. Who was the greatest Olympian that you know of? Shout it out if you know. Tim Thorpe. Okay. Anybody else? He was mentioned. Okay. How about the greatest boxer of all time? Okay. How about the greatest golfer? Who? The Arnold? Arnold Palmer? Oh, yeah, tea and lemonade. He made the Arnold Palmer drink. I love that. Tea and lemonade. Okay, what about the greatest president? Past pre let's do past presidents. Okay. 
All right, that's interesting. Some people said, the majority said Lincoln, but um, okay. You know, it's one thing to be the greatest, greatest Olympian, to be the greatest boxer, to be the greatest golfer, to be the greatest president. But it's quite another thing to have a need to be great, to have a need to be number one, to have a need to be the big shot, a need to be better than others. None of us really like those kind of people who need to be the greatest. And that's what our gospel lesson is about today. Some disciples needed and wanted to be number one, the best of all the disciples, better than the other disciples. They wanted to be top dog, religious big shots, the leaders of the pack. It amazes me that some of the followers of Jesus who spent so much time with him, saw his miracles, walked with him, still didn't get it, what Jesus invited us to be, which was his servants. Some people who had walked really closely with Jesus still didn't get it, that the greatest person in the realm of God was the person who has the heart of a servant. James and John, they're the two that approached Jesus and said, Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Boy, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Is that not kind of a selfish and self-centered statement? Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. So Jesus said, well, what do you want me to do for you? He asked James and John that. What do you really, really want from me? And they answered by revealing their self-centered and self-centered hearts. Grant us to sit at your right hand and at your left hand when you come again in glory. The truth finally came out. James and John wanted glory. Anybody else want glory or honor or to be the greatest? They wanted power, status, and authority. They still didn't get what Jesus was t teaching, that the son of humanity would suffer, would be killed, and on the third day rise from the dead. They had visions of themselves in the future at the right and left hand of Jesus. They just didn't see that he was there to teach them what it means to be a servant and a follower of him. So he asked them, well, do you really know what you are asking? Are you able to be baptized as I am going to be baptized? Oh, sure thing, they replied, not understanding that Jesus was going to be baptized in his suffering and death on the cross. Now, the gospel reading says the other ten disciples became angry with James and John. They, were, they became angry because of their inflated, selfish, and brazen ambition. Or maybe they were angry because they didn't ask Jesus this first. So Jesus then taught them, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Humanity came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many which goes to prove people still don't get it, that to be a follower of Jesus, we're called to be his servants. Eventually, James and John did get it. They finally learned the lesson that Jesus was trying to teach them. And the same is true of us. We too, as followers of Jesus, as we walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, hang out with Jesus, some of us sometimes still don't get what it means to be a servant of others. Now we can use the right religious buzzwords and go to church regularly, attend classes and Bible studies, but still not get that basic lesson of life that Jesus was trying to teach James and John and all of us. Because the greatest person in God's eyes is a person who has a heart of humble service toward God and others. A servant always has a loving heart and working hands both the heart and the hands, not just the heart of a servant who sees the needs of others, not just a heart who feels the pain of those who lost their homes to hurricane, not just a heart who emphasizes those who have lost their jobs, their income, and their insurance. Servants always have good and loving and generous hearts, but they also have hands to do the work that God calls us to, H hands that make meals, Hands that clean up the tables, hands that do the dishes, 
hands that actually help people in their need. Heart and hands. In the gospel text for today, Jesus says that whoever is great among you must be a servant. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus without being his servant and without having the heart and the hands of a servant. It's like water being wet and fire being hot and ice being cold. So a follower of Christ must be a servant. There are things in life which are more important than others. And the invitation from Jesus for us to have the heart and hands of a servant, of a servant is central to being a disciple of Jesus. For me, living a life of a servant is also the essence of what it means to be a human being, whether one is a follower of Christ or not. All great humans throughout the history of our planet are those people that have served the needs of others, that they have discovered the gem for living, that it, that it is in giving that we receive, that it is in dying to ourselves that we find ourselves. I love Jesus. I think he was profound in the way he lived his life and the way that he died. He was profound in all that he taught us about God, our creator, the one who loves us and cares for us. The words that Jesus gives us today are the best that anyone can give. Whoever would be great must be a servant of all. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, we thank you for this time of coming together, of being with you and with one another. I pray, O oh God, that we will continue to be the servants of Jesus. May we have hearts that are filled with love and compassion. And may we have hands that are willing to do the work that you've called us to do. We thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus the Christ. And may we just continue to follow him. And we say this in your many names. Amen. God bless you.
Paul would say, we are blessed, are we not? We have many blessings, and this is one of our blessings, this building. And we've come to the point to, of our service where we do our offerings. And today we have two offerings, the one to help keep these doors open and helping hands. And the helping hands offering this month and next month is going to go to the MCC Disaster Relief Fund to help those people in Florida uh, rebuild. And uh, let's be as generous as we possibly can. And for those of you at home, there are several ways that you can give. Uh, through uh, PayPal, you can pay through the bank. So the first offering is for the church, the second one is for Helping Hands. So yes, and through the bank, through check or money order, uh, pastor says she will go pick it up if you'd like her to, and by some chance she can't do it, I will be happy to go and pay a visit and uh, pick up your offerings. So please be as generous as you can, because remember what you give comes back tenfold. Okay, one bread, one body, and we're also going to do this a cappella. So everybody, bring out your best voices. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. Thank you. 
Yes, everyone, thank you. <laughs> we come now to the time when we celebrate the meal that Jesus gave to us. A time when Jesus reminded us that there is no head of this table. There is room for all. There is no place of honor. There is no place of disgrace. For this table is given and instituted for all of us. On the night before our Lord was to suffer, he took bread in his hands. He gave thanks to God for it, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, and he said, Take this and eat, th eat this, for this is my body, broken for you. And then he took a cup, blessing it and giving thanks to God for it, and then saying, Take this and drink, for this is my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. And as often as you come together and eat of this bread and drink of this cup, remember me until we do this again face to face. We have always practiced an open table in MCC, and you do not need to be a member of this church or of any church to receive these gifts, for these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. And we participate in the communion of saints, remembering all of those that have come before us, those gathered with us, with us now, and those yet to come. All is ready. Come taste and see the goodness of God. All the servers and holders, please come forward.
Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you again that once, one more time, you have met us in this place and you have fed us with your spirit and with this spiritual food. We pray now that as we prepare to leave, that we might do so humbly, that we might be your servant and the servant of all in our world. We ask these things in your name. Amen. I need to turn my mic on. <laughs> okay, one day at a time is our song of going forward. And, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite songs, and I usually do this in Spanish. But this week we're going to do it in English. And let us remember to live our lives one day at a time because that's our gift is the day that the Lord gives us, and that is one day at a time. So... Please sing out. And we do have music. <laughs>
that one, didn't we? Thank you all so much for being with us today. Uh, please join us in the celebration hall. We have uh, two different soups for you to try today if you're hungry and some other refreshments. Everyone's welcome. And I hope I'll see you next Sunday as we continue uh, joining together as a community of faith. May God bless you. Go in peace. Amen.